Hey everybody, my name is Jay Martin. Thanks for watching. This is a 1v1 game in Grassy Flatlands, and I was excited to actually get a game in and, and then do that commentary on. I've been super busy lately and not been able to play much, but I've got one of the French builds that I've been kind of experimenting with lately. I have three lights on the left with a couple line, and then on the right side just a bunch of line with a militia in front of them. And I only have five cav. Usually I bring six or more. And that's what I've got this game. Yeah, they look good, don't they? Look at those guys. Little guard national. Little guard national for you. And uh, this game... Two interesting things happen in this game. First of all is the decision that I made that I'm not really sure is the correct decision. And the second is kind of how to deal with kiters. And people ask me this question a lot. And so this video, my opponent kites a lot. And I'll show you how I dealt with it. Um... It's not really a true kiting scenario because it's not like my opponent had a bunch of 125s or anything, but it is kind of relevant to the game. Uh, this is my opponent. My opponent's name is Samantha, which I kind of doubt is their real life name. But what I noticed earlier in the game is that my opponent has their five lights right in the center right there, but they're backed up by two landware, which can't form square. Um, so my thought, and uh, that being the fact, and the second fact is that French line infantry is a lot better than Prussian line infantry. The only real advantage that Prussia has is their light infantry, their fusiliers. So my thought was that if I could just get cav into these land where I can't form squares, so that means that I can charge these fusiliers with cav. They don't really have anywhere to go because they're just backed up by land wear. That's kind of what I was thinking, and my plan at the beginning was, well, if I can just trade all of my cav for all of their lights, then I should be in pretty good position for the rest of this game. And you, that might be good, it might be bad, but that's exactly what I was thinking. There's kind of the blue dots where I'm maneuvering. And you can see I'm moving my cab to the center, and right about now we get close enough, he gets a bunch of shots off my lights, and here comes my cab straight down the middle. Now, there it goes in action. Um, I probably did this quite poorly. Here come, you know, little people want the close-up, so there's a close-up of that. Um, so my cav get in there, and I probably, like, that unit's at a walk, what the fuck. But, um, um, what I probably fucked up with this charge is I should have been more aggressive to get my infantry in to take advantage of the utter carnage. Actually, I know Kraz is watching this video and being like, Jay, why didn't you move your infantry up? I recognize that. In hindsight, I should have had my infantry up more aggressive to take shots at everybody. Um, but I think that this charge was actually pretty effective. What wound up happening is I wound up trading um, all of my cav, or five of my cav, for four of his lights, one of his militia, and I think three of his cav. So I think in terms of just do the numbers, that wound up being pretty successful. Um, like in terms of just the dollars and cents aspect of it. He comes out of that with two lights left. Now, the kind of downside of this from a strategic standpoint is that he comes out of this with three cav units left, and then um, I have none. And here's kind of a look at the line of battle. Um, I have three lights left on my left. He has a kind of half of two lights left in his center. And then we have line facing off everywhere. The, the real thing, if Samantha wanted to win this game, is Samantha has to make their cav work. At this point in the game, my infantry is better than theirs. Uh, than Samantha's. Um, but Samantha does have cav, and Samantha does have a couple lights still active in the center. And from this point in the game, um, so enter phase two of the game, Samantha really has to make their uh, cav work. And let's watch what happens. Firefight starts on the right. Those are where their foot guards are. Notice that's where their uh, general is as well. So there's two units of foot guards on the right. They uh, take out my fusilier line, but I have a reserve old guard moving that direction. Now here's where it gets interesting. Samantha charges all of her cav into the center. Now that's a good charge because I have a militia unit there, but what I'm able to do is run that militia unit behind a line unit I formed a square. I noticed this in my video on light infantry. When somebody charges your... Um, unit, get them behind a unit in square. Now, it continues that charge into my general. It could move, but I run the general again to an area where I have a square. And from this point on, what Samantha did is just mass charge cav with, without any support and charge those cav in areas where I had squares. And the net result of that is that Samantha pretty much wastes her cav without getting any real value for it. Now, some casualties are done to these sort of units, but no actual units are taken out. And and the aftermath of Samantha's cav work is we both have no cav, but I do have a light infantry advantage, and I do have a line infantry advantage as well. 
And right about this point, we're going to reform lines. And I have an advantage over Samantha. And Samantha positioned her lights poorly right there, which allowed me to get good flanking fire on them, and I route one of them at 30. Um, and right about here, we start phase three of the battle. Notice they pull back. I start to reform lines. And I have a definite advantage. Now, Samantha's general is still alive. But I have a definite advantage in the quantity of infantry, and because Samantha doesn't have any cav left, you notice I'm able to spread my infantry way out. Now, Samantha starts mass kite at this point, is what Samantha kites starts doing. Excuse me. What Samantha starts kiting right now. Now, if you're going to kite successfully, the whole point of kiting is to take advantage of range. So you let your opponent walk into your range, which hopefully is longer, take a shot, and then retreat. Um, the real solution to this, at least in Napoleon Total War, is to walk faster than they can retreat. And that's exactly what I start to do. So what I start to do is move up really aggressively and really fast. And I start to move up closer than Samantha can retreat. And Samantha starts to advance here, but kind of gets a second breath. And, oh, sorry. I moved the mouse around too fast. And kind of all I do at this point is... I do have a range advantage in the center with my couple of units of lights, but I just move my units up really, really fast. And, I mean, that unit routes it. Man, that unit routes at 70. I think maybe, I don't think I've killed her general at this point, but I'm able to move units up. And all I do to defeat the kiter at this point is I just move up faster than she can retreat. And I'm doing a much better job at the sea. Look at me. Get, I'm getting shots in the back of that unit right there on the right side. And I do that a lot better on the right side than I do on the left. Um, but the real solution of the kiter is to move up faster than they can to retreat. Now, I want to give some props to Samantha who, like, kind of, you know, faked and advanced there but then retreated. Um, but all I do right now is, and I do have a flank position, is notice I'm moving up my units really aggressively. Samantha, the red line is really close. I mean, at some point, Samantha's going to run back to the red line. Um, you know, I'm not really sure if I was the Samantha player or what I would be doing at this point, but... When you're outnumbered, you got to attack. I mean, it's it's fairly obvious that if the game continues at this pace, um, I'm going to be able to flank and then win the firefight against Samantha. Um, so I don't think that strategically Samantha made the right decision here. But all I do is just advance my people faster than Samantha can retreat them. And in the course of this, I'm going to get good flanking fire on another unit there. I think Samantha goes melee charge, so I just counter charge. Well, I think we're going to wind up at a wash right there. But... It really, it, it's kind of simple against the kiter. At this point, all I do is just move up faster than she can retreat. And it's, yep, there we go. I mean, a couple volleys in this musketeer's route, and I move up, and a couple volleys in this musketeer's route. So against the kiter, if, if you outnumber the kiter, it's pretty basic. All you want to do is just move up and get fire on them. That's it. But you've got to move up a little bit faster than they can retreat. And you're going to get higher quality shots because you can shoot them in the back. Now, an interesting thing happens here. Samantha starts to advance on this side. And she actually has a range advantage because those fusiliers have a range of 100. So I'm content to pull back while my flanking force here gets on you know, her flank. And I just shoot it out that way. And all I do is keep moving up and moving up and moving up and yada, yada, yada. And I want to note at this point that Samantha was rated pretty high. Like, I think she had six or seven stars, which really outclasses me. I only have four. But all I did was just keep moving up. And at this point, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. I, you know, completely outnumber Samantha, so I can just get on her flank, whatever, even though she's pressed against the red line right there. But all I do is just move up and put fire on her. I'm content to uh, not let her shoot at me on this flank, and I can just keep moving up on that flank over there. So, you know, kind of what I did in this game is I noticed that my opponent made a big tactical blunder. They didn't have legitimate line infantry protection for their lights, so I just ran all my cav in there, and I think I got pretty good value for my cav in that exchange. And then after that, when she started, you know, the, the big kite maneuver, I just advanced a little bit quicker than she could retreat. And what's kind of interesting, if you look right now, is that Samantha actually killed more people than I did. And Samantha actually deployed more, more people than I did, but... Um, a couple advantages I had for me is that Samantha had her 
you know, general in a line unit, so when that general couldn't get, move around and provide morale boost, that this was a subject on TW Center forums lately. So I think I got a little more value over having a m mobile general, and then more importantly, I was able to kind of focus fire kind of where it mattered and get on her flank a little bit. So that that's kind of the real lesson. I was able to hold my morale better, and that's that's an advantage of playing France with hold guard too. I had a little bit of a morale boost, but what's kind of interesting in this game, my opponent killed more people than I did, but I had my people at points where it mattered. So that's something to keep in mind when you're playing your Napoleon games. Um, and I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching. My name is Jay Morton. Check out more information at tbreplays.com.